even if what I was saying was correct, it was not being said in a way, in a style, that she could possibly receive it. And so I might as well have been saying all the wrong things because when you say even the right things in the wrong way at the wrong time in a way that they cannot receive it, then it's just as bad as saying the wrong things. It doesn't matter if what you say is correct. What matters is if what you say can be received by the person that you want to receive it. Welcome, everybody, to The Chris Harder Show, where we are making you unapologetic about your pursuit of success, knowing that when good people like you make good money, they can then do great things. My name is Chris Harder, and several times per week, I will bring you epic guests, solo episodes, and every single tool, trick, and skill set you need to grow your business, grow your money mindset, and to grow your wealth to levels that you have never reached before. I've ended up in a unique place in life where I've got the experience, the connections, and all of the secrets that it takes to be successful. And I'm lifting the curtain to reveal it all to you in an effort to help put you in a position of abundance so great that you can then be as generous as possible. So let's lock arms and let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to The Chris Harder Show, where today I'm grateful for having really good workouts lately. Like I am stringing together some epic workouts. Now, I'm grateful, you know, obviously that it's being effective and that it's helping me meet my goal of like getting totally jacked again. But more importantly, I mean this from the standpoint of I'm really grateful that I can work out. And there's a lot of people, even friends that I have, where they've got physical limitations where they literally can't. And they would give anything to be able to go for a run. They'd be give anything to be able to lift weights. They'd give anything to be able to push themselves or push their heart. And, and they literally and physically can't. And so when I say I'm grateful for the really good workouts, It's like a two-sided grateful. Yeah, I'm grateful for how effective and how good they felt, but more importantly, I'm grateful that I get to do that. And if you're like, what the hell is this dude talking about? If you're new to the show and you're like, why is he starting the show with this? What does this have to do with me? I start every solo episode with something I'm grateful for. And it's just my way of reminding you to stop and take inventory of what you do have. Stop and take inventory of how you are blessed. Instead of always being focused on what you don't have or what you want, but you're just not there yet, because it really flips your life on its head in a good way. You really start to see the world through eyes of abundance instead of eyes of lack because you're constantly taking inventory of, wait, I do have this, I do have that, I do have this, I do have that. I have a lot of things in my favor. I am well equipped to go out there and and have the life that I want to have or hit the goals that I want to hit as opposed to waking up every day and just by default because it's human nature saying, oh, I wish I had this. Oh, I don't have this. You know, they have this and I don't or they have that and I don't. And it's just a beautiful place to live is that place from abundance. So hopefully uh, this is a great reminder that rubs off in you in that way. Another reminder for you, my wife, Lori, has this really famous one day business workshop for women only. Sorry, dudes. And it's called Girlfriends in Business. And it is like caught fire. Last time that she sold seats to it, it sold out in less than 90 minutes. And for some reason, the, the website kept selling tickets. So we had to refund a bunch of them. It was like embarrassing and a blessing all at once. Anyhow, obviously, that's going to happen again, probably even faster this time. It's at the end of September in Scottsdale, Arizona. It's one full day. It's 75 really driven women collaborating, learning from incredible speakers. If you know Lori's network, you know that they are the the A-listers of entrepreneurship and they always fly in or swing by to be able to talk to the group in an intimate way. And then the collaboration that she has you do with other women entrepreneurs is just amazing, like amazing. You literally leave with girlfriends and new ideas for your business. So if you want to attend the late September Girlfriends in Business, here's how you get on the VIP wait list so that you have a shot at getting a seat. Remember, they sold out in less than 90 minutes last time. You have to text Lori the word workshop so she can put you on the VIP early access text list. So text her the word workshop to 310-496-8363. No joke, literally hit pause real quick before we get into this episode about how to be a great business partner. Just hit pause real quick and text Lori the word workshop. Literally just type in the word workshop to 310-496-8363. That's 310 310- 496-8363. That's going to be your best and only shot at getting a ticket to attend her super famous, super epic girlfriends in business at the end of September. All right. So what I want to talk about today is how to be a great business partner or really these three principles, these three C's that I'm going to talk about is how to be a great partner in general. They apply to all types of partnerships, romantic relationships, 
romantic business partnerships, like what Lori and I have had for a lot of years, business partnerships, like what my business partner Matt and I have when it comes to Frello, the fintech app that we're about to launch, or team partnerships, how you can truly see your team as team members, as partners, and how you can show up for them as a really good partner, as opposed to just seeing them as employees or something like that. So the three C's that I'm referring to are the following. It's communication, consistency, and complementary competencies. And if you know what competencies are, uh, it's what you are really well versed at. It's what you're good at. And so when I say complementary competencies, it means you as a partner have complementary competencies to fill the weak spots that your other partner might have or flip it in reverse. Your partner should have complementary competencies to be a good partner to help fill the gaps that you have. And these three C's, when you master these things, communication, consistency, and complementary competencies, that's when you know you have a good partnership. That's when you get everything dialed in. So let's break each one of these down a little bit. Communication. Here's a really good example of communication and being a good partner. When I've left corporate America and came home to help support Lori in building her brand, and we're talking years ago, we're talking like 2010, 2011, something like that. I came home, or I should say I worked in banking and lending, and it was a very masculine, goal-driven, super fast-paced, like bros kind of atmosphere. And I did that for a lot of years. I did it really well. So the problem is when I came home saying, hey, babe, this is going to be great. You do what you're good at. I'm going to do what I'm good at. I'll do all the things in the background that you don't like doing. This is going to be a dream partnership. In theory, yeah, sounded right. In execution, is a disaster. As a matter of fact, as Lori tells it, six months in, she's like, I'm not even sure if I want to be much less business partners with this guy, much less married to this guy. She's not kidding. She's literally like, I'm not sure a marriage can survive you being home, Chris, and us being business partners. Now, here's what was interesting. We really, really wanted this to work. We didn't just throw the baby out with the bathwater and be like, yeah, it's not going to work. Screw you. We really wanted this to work. We had some pretty big dreams And we knew that if we could dial this in, that it could be a success. And we realized our biggest problem was communication. The when, the how, the why, and the style. See, remember, I just told you I came from this really masculine, fast-paced industry. So I'd come home and I'd be like, babe, the goals are off. Babe, what's going on with sales? Babe, our launch has to be like this. Sit down, we've got to do this. And even if what I was saying was correct, It was not being said in a way, in a style, that she could possibly take it on, that she could possibly receive it. And so I might as well have been saying all the wrong things, because when you say even the right things in the wrong way at the wrong time, in a way that they cannot receive it, then it's just as bad as saying the wrong things. It doesn't matter if what you say is correct. What matters is if what you say can be received by the person that you want to receive it. You see why this is so important when it comes to partnerships. So we sat down, we dialed that out. We literally put all our cards on the table. All right, obviously it's triggering when I say this. Obviously it's triggering when I do that. How do you want me to approach the following subjects? When should I bring up the following subjects and when shouldn't I? And how would you like me to say them? Like give me examples of how you'd like me to talk about the launch or goals or sales or anything like that. And she would really give me examples. Now, at first, I didn't like the example she gave me, right? It was the opposite of the way that I communicated with. So I was very resistant to it. But the truth is we wanted this to work. So I was willing to try it her way. And we role-played it. We literally role-played how to say things to her in a way that she could receive it. And guess what? The end result is here we are, you know, 12, 13, 14 years later, whatever it is, absolutely crushing it as business partners in lots of businesses because we ironed out the one and most important thing and that is communication. That's why it's the first and and most important C of the three C's of being a great business partner. So the second one I said was consistency. And what I mean by consistency is consistency in how you show up. Can you be counted on to show up consistently as a performer when you're a business partner? Can you be counted on to show up consistently in personality? One day are you on you know, cloud nine, everything can be possible, and the next day you're down and out and negative? That's not consistent. 
If when money's coming in, are you happy? And when money's not coming in, you're a real jerk. That's not consistent. You can't get two highs on the high and two lows on the low. You have to be consistent in every way if you're going to be a good business partner. And these two start to tie together, the communication and the consistency. The consistency in your communication is also very important. How consistently do you guys talk about issues, talk about goals, talk about objectives, talk about challenges? You see, the more often you talk about these things, the easier they are to talk about. Lori and I have a policy. It's called smoke, not fire. That is, we want to talk about things early and often in both in our romantic relationship and as business partners. We want to talk about things early and often when they're just smoke long before they become a raging forest fire. Because as you know, a raging forest fire is really hard to deal with. Sometimes that can be the end of everything. But it never gets to that point if you're always talking about it while it's just small and smoldering. So that's why the second one is so important, consistency. Your partner cannot know how to show up for you if they don't know who they're showing up for. What I mean by who is, are you angry guy today? Are you happy girl today? Are you optimistic person today? Are you pessimistic person today? Are you, I'm showing up late today and the next day you're showing up early? Consistency is crucial when it comes to having a good partnership in any form. And then that brings us to that third C I was talking about, complementary competencies. Listen, there's going to be a lot of things that you're just naturally good at. There's going to be a lot of things that you're not good at. This doesn't determine your future. This doesn't determine your fate. What it does determine is who's going to line up as a good partner for you or not. The truth is this, no matter how much you like, might like someone, no matter how talented they are, they're not going to be your ideal partner if you guys are really good at the exact same things and really bad at the exact same things. I use my business partner, Matt. He is so good at so many of the areas that are weaknesses for me. One great example is we're building a fintech company that takes a lot of legal and tedious details and legislation. He finds that stuff enjoyable. He's fantastic at that stuff. He's got relationships at the state and federal level that literally is helping us write our own legislation to, to protect the style of lending that we want to do. That's just one of many examples of complementary competencies. I wouldn't even know how to begin to do that stuff. Now, when it comes to marketing, of course, he's run a lot of successful businesses, sold an incredible nine-figure business, but marketing isn't the thing he enjoys the most, and being out front isn't the thing he enjoys the most. He doesn't like being the person out there talking about the, the company and doing all the interviews and all that stuff. And I love that. I love painting the vision. I love telling everybody about it. I love doing the interviews. I love doing the podcasts. So that's a complimentary competency that I have to help backfill something that he doesn't enjoy or is not good at. That's what I mean by complimentary competencies. If both of us wanted a spotlight, it might not work out. If, none of, if neither one of us is good at details and legislation and policies and you know, documents, it's probably not going to work out. We'd have way too much hiring to do to you know, cover those tracks. And of course, that's always an option. But the truth is, you always want one of the principles to be really good or at least proficient at as many things as possible. So you're going to be a good business partner or your business partner is going to be a good fit for you if you guys have complementary competencies. And when it comes to these competencies, there's a very important thing to understand, and that is accountability. You have to be accountable to showing up in your complementary competencies very strong all the time because your partner's counting on you too. And there has to be trust. You have to trust that they're going to do the parts of the job that they say they're going to be good at doing. And you have to trust that they're going to do it. You can't be looking over their shoulder all the time. You can't be checking their work all the time. Of course, you have to have checks and balances in place so things don't slip through the cracks. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is you can't go redo their work all the time or you can't just do it and say, ah, you know what, I just thought I would do it for you because it starts to take the value away from the partner and it takes away the efficiency, the whole purpose of the partnership to begin with. Now, you might, you might as well just be an individual sole proprietor at that point. You might as well be the only CEO at that, part, at that point. So trust and accountability comes into play big time 
with these complementary competencies. You master these three C's, communication, consistency, and complementary competencies. And that is how you're going to have a thriving partnership in any form, thriving friendships even. You're going to be a thriving team member in this way. You're going to have thriving business partnerships in this way. And this even applies to having a thriving romantic relationship. Hope this helps. Let me know. I always love hearing from you guys when you DM me. Let me know what you like about the episodes. Give me suggestions for other ones. And don't forget, if you want to come to Girlfriends in Business at the end of September, it's going to be almost impossible to get a ticket unless you text Lori the word workshop. So hit stop right now and text the word workshop to Lori at 310-496-8363. Again, text the word workshop to Lori right now at 310-496-8363. Thanks for listening. Always love and appreciate you. Thanks for listening. And if you loved this episode and know of someone else who is as successful as they are generous, please pass them on to me. It would mean the world to me if you help me get this cause and this message out to as many listeners as I can. So please, if you liked what you heard, it goes a long way if you take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and share this with your friends. I'll be forever grateful. And until the next episode, cheers to your success.